Hi, everybody. Welcome to Pace Studio on the Road. We are live at Jan's house right now in Nashville with Rodney Crowell. Rodney, it's great to see you again. How you doing? Yeah, I'm, nice you I'm well. Nice. I'm well. We're, uh, we're getting there, man. We're, yeah. Yeah. we're getting there. This is our first of, uh, of a delightful week upcoming in Nashville. Congratulations to you on the book. Word for Word is out in the world as of yesterday. Yesterday. And we will chat a little bit about it. I'm conveniently open to the pictures. There's a lot of... Uh, your poetry, your lyrics, your thoughts on those words, and uh, many other artists' thoughts on those words as well. I've enjoyed it immensely. Mm -hmm. Can we talk a little bit about um, word for word, the idea that, so for me, um, most of the reading of this book has happened on airplanes, places without internet. So I haven't been right. able to listen to the songs while I've been reading the right. words, and I've just, I've spoken them out loud well, to myself. <laughs> Can we talk about the, uh, the way that words in the absence of music are art in themselves and the importance of just the way that they sound? Yeah. Yeah, I write a little bit, and, and I think early, there's a blurb, my own blurb early in the book where I talk about Guy Clark, who was a, uh, a mentor of mine early on in my formation as a songwriter. And we used to, used to talk about, well, you know, we'd sit me down and listen to, to uh, Dylan Thomas reading po his own poetry, uh, Under the Milk Lord or Child's Christmas in Wales. And he would say, now listen, or, you know, our songs need to sound as good spoken as they do sung. And, and that registered with me. And oftentimes I'd go and with a new song to play for a guy and uh, or Susanna's wife and, and <laughs> wind up putting the guitar down and just reciting the words. And I learned that if, if I were reciting words to a new song, if I could look you in the eye the whole time and deliver the words to you, good chance that, that it was solid because instinctively, if it, there was a throwaway line, a soft rhyme, or something that just didn't work, you'd want to look, avert your eyes. Yeah. So um, that's, I think maybe that was the seed planted for me to even make a book like this a long time ago was something along those lines. Well, and can you, um, so if we're making eye contact and you feel the need to avert your eyes, you know that's not a real line. It, was there anybody else other than, was it Guy Clark specifically where you had to look him in the eye and you could tell if he was the barometer, the thermo yeah, thermostat he had, or whatever? Yeah, he had a particularly eagle. Yeah. He had an eagle-like stare and his eyes were piercing. So there was that to start with. But I've tried it. You know, I do these songwriting camps and... Um, Sometimes uh, a willing participant would sit down and recite, recite their lyrics to me, look me in the eye. And uh, I could tell, you know, they were, you could see them shaking. And I said, I can relate. I've, I've, <laughs> I've sat in that seat. Yeah. Yeah, it is. I mean, when it's just you and your words without even a guitar in between you and the expression of yourself, that is a very, very direct form of communication. Mm -hmm. And I've, so uh, in this book, um, Juan, if you, I, am I in focus here? Um, there's, there's a ton of, I mean, there's many, many pictures of your notebooks and there's a ton of revision that happens. And mm -hmm. it's really interesting yeah. to see yeah. the iterative process that you go through. And I want to, want to talk a little bit about the, um, the living nature of these songs, like the Bob Seeger, the one that Bob Seeger covered of yours. And then you rewrote, there's three different versions of that in this book. I want to and, talk a and little. none of them are the final version. <laughs> Yeah, nor will there ever be a final version. There may be now. <laughs> there may be. It's it's. A, I thought it was, a, you know, a book of lyrics. I I took the liberty of thinking it would be interesting for songwriters or people who are just interested in writing. Period. To know that you know one of my most successful songs, I still consider unfinished. Um, and I I've, I've tinkered with it. I didn't perform it for. 35 years because Bob Seger's version of it was so perfect. I couldn't match his performance for one thing, and I knew that, so best leave it be. But it, And I even once, when I ran into Bob, I said, hey, what about that last verse? And he said, it's great. But another songwriter who will remain anonymous ran into me and he said, hey, uh, 
I recorded your song, and he said, I sure wish I'd have been there with you to help you on that last verse. <laughs> and I grabbed him. I said, I hugged him. I said, finally, somebody who agrees with me. <laughs> and, it, you know, he meant it as a slam. But, but I really, you know, I caught him off guard when I said, thanks, man. I'm so <laughs> glad somebody knows. And uh, I still feel that way. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's so many, um, all these lyrics, many of these lyrics, what I want to know from you about is, um, I mean, the one where you got, you got taken to jail for yeah. not a particularly long period of time for, for, uh, you know, unpaid, um, unpaid, uh, yeah. dog off leash tickets yeah. and then turned into a song about been locked up for, mm -hmm. you know, years and years. And so I, I wonder where, where the line is for you about where you, take an autobiographical thing and then turn it into not autobiography. Like, how, can you tell when something you've written is um, more autobiographical than it ought to be and then pull back and, and um, I don't pull, fictionalize? I don't pull back from, uh, from the autobiographical nature of anything I'm writing uh, if it's true, if it works it works and if it if all if the autobiography isn't all working then i'll invent something to go with it yeah and in, in in song you know practically everybody does that i'm sure it's because sometimes all of the autobiographical uh in um uh, information that you have to give you still sometimes have to have a chorus um, and so you have to sometimes invent that chorus or you have to invent the, the last verse. Oftentimes it's the last verse, as in Shame on the Moon, that, uh, that you have to labor over to. Because sometimes when inspiration comes in it, if you're lucky enough to catch that lightning in a bottle whew, and get it all, good on you. But sometimes you just get two-thirds of it and the energy or the the flash of inspiration drains away and you're left with oh, okay i gotta come up with a last verse that's as good as that natural thing that just happened yeah the perspiration part and not the inspiration part yeah, yeah. which I, there was one one story that you told about uh the the jonestown massacre right mm -hmm. where you that's were the, in in the yeah, middle that's shame on the moon and yeah 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 in the middle of a moment of inspiration and then heard that jim jones had just drunk the kool-aid and everybody and then it's just absolutely gone and have you have you stuck to not having a telephone not having a, a tv absolutely. anywhere near you when you're when you're feeling that Absolutely. I mean, this was Shame on the Moon that we've been talking about. It was, I was stoned. I'd been smoking some herb. Good. And I was strumming a G to E minor chord, and the television was on low. And the song was, the song just appeared, and I was making this Shame on the Moon, had this chorus and everything. And then on the television comes the Jimmy Jones report, right when I'm getting to that third verse portion of writing the song and I was shocked out of the reverie that I was creating the song in and, and uh, that was the last time I ever allowed anything like that to be happening anywhere near I'm, I'm making a song yeah it's like when it, when you're making a song or when a song's finding you you don't need any distractions around you yeah I was telling these guys offline that I threw my telephone in the trash almost four years ago, and I do not have that in my life at all. And I, I miss very rarely miss an opportunity to proselytize until the internet. Good. Please so, throw your yeah, telephone so how away. Are you, how are for you the same, managing in this modern world? Well, I, I you, on you that must laptop. Have a really good assistant. <laughs> no, it's us, man. It's me and, and me and Juan. I'm just on that computer all the time. But when I'm out in the world and trying to live my life and observe things, there's not that distraction and that constant need to doom scroll through you may nothing. You be my new personal hero. <laughs> wow. I'm making right. bumper stickers of that, <laughs> says Rodney Crowell. <laughs> um, I got mine's on the floor just waiting for me. It's just sitting there throbbing. Yeah. You. We, so speaking of smoking weed, writing songs, um, alcohol is plays a huge 
you know, maybe half your songs are about or include a character who is a drunk about drinking about, I mean, uh -huh. I did, I explored my relationship to alcohol quite a bit whilst reading this right. book. And last night we explored our relationship as one does at Jan's house. And um, I want to know what your relationship to it is considering it's a frequent what? subject of, of discussion. Cause you look, that's I mean, you look wonderful. You look healthy and not like a person who has yeah. overindulged their entire life, uh, but it seems like that's been part of it for you. Alcohol has not been, um, really prominent in my life for a long time. Mm. Uh, uh, addiction has been prominent in my life, uh, uh, so much so that, that I, I'm a member of a particular 12-step program Friends of Bill. on how, <laughs> know uh, more about how to live gracefully uh, with an addict. And, you know, once I was just an absolute pothead, it's, it and music seem to go so well together with me, but, you know, it, I embarrassed myself pretty much in about 30-some years ago and said, time to put that away. Yeah. And, uh, no, I'm pretty much your straight-ahead dude, but I am very much uh, aware of the tragedy and, and the heartbreak of, of addiction. I live with it, with a family member yeah. whom I love. Yep. Yep. I can relate to that personally as well. I do do the same thing, but it's a, your relationship to it and those characters and the way that it expresses yourself in, in music is uh, very, it resonates with me quite a bit. Well, mind you, I grew up in Te East Houston in Texas Yep. with a bunch of crazed Cajun alcoholics. And most of my favorite uncles were drunks and, and the, and they were the, they were poets, you know, they weren't, they never wrote anything on paper or they they never it was not like constructing a narrative for them they were just living their lives out loud drunk and disorderly mm -hmm. and funny and i loved my drunk uncles <laughs> they were entertaining and they drew, they did crazy stuff like driving cars off into the gulf of mexico just to see how much of a splash just cuz <laughs> You know, as a nine-year-old kid, I thought, those guys are the ones I want to hang with. Yeah, yeah, the real philosophers. Yeah, <laughs> they were living at large. Man, well, we, um, I've enjoyed this conversation very much. We could talk all day. I would imagine that you've got a busy day today, and um, let us perhaps move into the music portion of this, of this chat. What do you feel like playing? We talked about Shame on the Moon a little bit. We've, uh, what's, what is striking your fancy right now? Well, what do you this think? This guitar, I noticed it when I came in. Guitars will generally tell you something. And this D minor come up. And I was thinking about this song. You probably know the songwriter, producer, Joe Henry. Oh, yeah. Joe's a dear friend of mine, and I made this song for him. I'm going to take a, I'm going to take a step out. Think I know what love is Forgiveness for a start Room for those you love to hate Somewhere inside your heart There are those who say That love is not but Got some column news Or old roller skates That fasten to the bottom of your shoe Some say love's a meditation On everything we are Good, bad, and indifferent Self-righteous and bizarre It's right there in the crosshairs Our every last mistake The sinners we've made holy And the saints we burned at stake If love is revelation and love we thus receive it all comes down to knowing less than most of us alone believe and love
If you're asking me what love is Here's what I might say You can find it out there anywhere On any given day It's an endless stream of consciousness Obtained in drips and drabs And a chance to do the right thing When there's no one keeping tabs If love is what we make it As you reap, so you sow The yang and yen, the where and when The first and last to come and go Love is all creation Love is manifest Is love when we're all given life And love when we're all laid to rest Thank you. Thank you, Rodney. Man, this has been a total pleasure. It's yeah. always great to always, see you. Always. Word for Word is the book. It just came out yesterday. Congratulations to Thank you on you. that. Um, the internet, please check this out. It's got all the Johnny Cash, the Roseanne Cash, the Emmylou Harris, the Rodney Crowell, of course, and all these lovely collaborations and a, yeah. excellent words, excellent pictures. Mary Carr. Mary, yeah, yeah. The poet Mary Carr, yeah. Guy and Susanna. It's mm -hmm. loaded with... Uh, Excellence. So, Rodney, it's always great to see you. My pleasure.